Hello everyone, I'm Colleen and today I'm going to be doing my very late top 10 books of 2014. So before I get started, I want to thank you guys so much for helping me reach 70 subscribers this week. And you guys really helped me feel welcome in this community and I'm so glad that I am part of it. And also, please do not mind the hat, I am having a bad hair day. So this is going to be in no particular order, and the majority of the books I'm going to mention were not published in 2014. It just so happened that I read them in 2014. Plus, keep in mind that I only started reading again back in the summer, which was June, which was also the month that I started BookTube. So in total, I read around 30 books, and I'm really happy about that, so let's get started, finally, with the video. I guess the first book that I'll mention is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. And the reason why I have included this in my top 10 video is because I thought that the writing format was really interesting. It is told in a dual perspective, which is one of them is in the man's perspective and the other one says it's the wife's perspective. And the wife's perspective is told in a diary form and I just thought it was genius and it just worked out really well. So if you guys like reading psychological thriller, I definitely recommend this. But do keep in mind that this is an adult book. Then we have Looking for Alaska by John Green. And I was iffy about reading this because I did not enjoy The Fall of Her Stars as much as I hoped to. But this was just really great and it was written really interestingly. Instead of having the chapters, it is leading up to this certain event that happens in this book. And also it was set in a boarding school and I really like it. Then we have The Evolution of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin, which is the second book in the Mara Dyer trilogy. I marathon the first and the second book and I did not enjoy the first book but I'm so glad that I gave the evolution of Mara Dyer a try because it was amazing and as I was reading it I had no idea it was on the last page until it says end of book two which was really upsetting and I really need to read the retribution of Mara Dyer as soon as possible. Next is The Disreputable History of Frankie Lando by E. Lockhart. I read it in December and so I will link my December reads in the description box below and check it out to see what other books I read because I had a really great December reading month. So it is set in a boarding school which means pranks just like Looking for Alaska. Um, I guess that's the reason why I liked it. I actually like it better than Looking for Alaska but it had a bit of feminism elements to it and just secret societies. Then we have Cinder by Marissa Meyer, which is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles. I am just so glad I decided to pick it up because, first of all, it is a sci-fi retelling of Cinderella, and then it has other fairy tales intertwined, so I can't wait to continue on with the series. Next on my list is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Yes, this is the second book by E. Lockhart on my list. I just had to. I was mind blown by this book, and I just still, to this day, I still think about that book. Between the distractible history of Frankie Lando and this book, it was written differently, so it wasn't the same, but you could still tell that it's by E. Lockhart. And I like that because I think E. Lockhart is a really great storyteller. Next is Animal Farm by Ariel B <laughs> Next is Animal Farm by George Orwell. And first of all, I want to thank Ariel Bissett for introducing me to Animal Farm and to George Orwell. This is the only book by George Orwell that I've read so far, but so far so good. This is just a really nice dystopian book because it is different from the dystopian books we read now and it's just amazing. I can't find uh, any other adjectives to describe this book because I am left speechless by this book. Then we have Kaya San by Darren Shan. I read this during the booktube and I was so glad I read it because it was really short but I felt like the character Kaya San has been through a lot of character development and for a book that's under 100 pages, I thought that was really great. The second last book that I'm going to mention is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. I have been on a reading slump for like years now and this book was one of the first books that I read when I went back to reading and it just helped me realize that fantasy is my go-to genre. And also, Sarah J Maas has created amazing characters and let me tell you, she has created swoon-worthy characters. Dorian is just amazing. <laughs> Who do you guys ship Selena with? Because I I don't know if you, you can tell, but it's obvious that I ship her with Dorian. Well, actually, I ship me with Dorian. And last but not least, we have Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I seriously enjoyed this book. It was heartbreaking and amazing and fun. And I just wanted to go traveling after I read this book. Like, it was... 
a breath of fresh air, I guess you could say. And while I was reading this book, I almost teared up and I had to stop myself from crying because it was late at night and my glasses would fog off. So I had to stop my tears. So that was my top 10 books of 2014. I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure to like, comment down whatever you want, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye!